Well, uh, Mr. Ambassador, it's a great pleasure uh, to welcome you to the Yasan Institute and to this very special program, Our World. Um, this is an opportunity for us to learn uh, more about our neighbors, important neighbors, uh, in terms of art. Uh, you know that uh, uh, Jan Sibelius' uh, Finlandia is, is I don't know how many you, uh, you Finnish people know, but it's very famous in, in Korea. <laughs> I'll tell you what, what, another thing that we all learn when we're growing up, and I'm not sure if Finland is aware of this, but we always learn uh, in school in Korea that uh, the Korean language belongs to the Euro-Altaic language group, and that Finnish is also of that, of that language group. So supposedly our language has something in common. I don't know if you've discovered anything, any common similarities yet. But uh, what I'm trying to say is that Finland is always there in the Korean consciousness, even since we're small kids, uh, through art, through, through uh, national security issues and others. Um, but I, I think that uh, we still definitely need an opportunity like this to really learn more. And I'm grateful uh, for uh, you in accepting this invitation and, and doing this uh, for us. So I very much look forward to your, your presentation today and, and the interaction. Thank you and welcome. Thank you. Friends, first of all, I, I would like to thank Asan Institute and, and EBS Channel for inviting me as Ambassador of Finland. It's a great pleasure to be here and to present you something about Finland. I know that here in Korea people know about Finland, but uh, maybe I will be able to deepen the understanding. Finland is a quite, uh, quite interesting country, and uh, I hope that... Uh, you will know more about. I will go my presentation through with these uh, photos, which will give you some idea about Finland. First of all, Finland is on the top of the world. It's a European, Nordic, and also Arctic country. Maybe the most uh, people living in this Arctic region are Finns. But uh, we are happy. Uh, and despite of the north position of ours, uh, Finland is not so cold. And that is because of the uh, warm sea stream that is coming to, from the Atlantic Ocean is coming to warm up. When you fly over Finland, you cannot see but forest, lakes, forest, lakes. That is uh, the Finnish nature. We have uh, around 200,000 lakes in Finland. And from our land, 80% is covered by forests. Our nature and our people are quite homogeneous. Uh, we are speaking special language, as Dr. Ham discussed, uh, expressed Finnish, which is not the language of uh, Indo-European family.
family. In, in the present European Union, there are only three countries where these kind of language, languages are spoken, besides Finland, Hungary, and Estonia. So the Finnish language is very specific, and maybe there is a connection to also to Korea. I'm not a specialist. Uh, but uh, the language, Finnish language, is not the only official language of ours. We have also Swedish, that is our official language. And actually, uh, our, from cultural heritage point of view, Sweden has influenced a lot. We were more than 600 years part of Sweden, and uh, most of our national institutions are, are from there. The um, fact that we have also been part of Russia, Russian Empire, for 100 years after Swedish rule, Russia took over for 100 years, and during that time we had an autonomous position in the Russian Empire. And uh, uh, people in Helsinki, we are still proud of this, uh, this period because uh, the Russian uh, influence is, is visible in, in Helsinki in a very positive way. Actually, in three years' time, Finland will celebrate 100 years of independence. 1917, Finland declared, uh, was declared independent from Russia. And since that time, we have always maintained our national institutions, our democracy, constitution. And actually, we are very proud that Finland was the very first country in the world with uh, women parliamentarians. 1907, the first women female parliamentarians in the world were Finns. Here is the group photo of those ladies. And this, this photo is from elections. And as I told you, from the very beginning until now, the, our democratic system has been untouched, and uh, that is something that we are very proud of. And uh, uh, speaking about ladies, you, you might know that Finland is very famous for, for its uh, equality, and uh, one, one sign of that is that we have in the parliament more than 40% of members uh, that are ladies, women, and uh, there are sometimes governments that the majority of ministers have been women. At the moment, it's about 50-50, I, I remember. Well, uh, after the independence, as you know, we had uh, and ha we have a big neighbor, and uh, to live with a uh, big neighbor, it's not always easy. And this led uh, also during the Second World War to a conflict with our neighbor at that time, Soviet Union, and uh, uh, based on the, the idea of um, Stalin to conquer Finland, to occupy Finland, we were attacked in, in uh, 1939, and uh, some people expected that it will be soon over. Independent Finland will be soon over, but um, this, this didn't happen, and uh, Finland was able to defend its independence also during the World War II. We were never occupied. And uh, one, one reason people have uh, thought to be behind that is, is the word Sisu, Finnish word, Sisu, which in Korean is something like Kangi, maybe, it's so. And um, it means uh, uh, 
brave, brave uh, resilience and uh, and uh, sometimes difficult to, to translate totally. But today also it, it could mean that uh, it could reflect the stubbornness of Finnish, <laughs> Finnish people, which might be also true. But this Sisu uh, partly saved uh, Finland and uh, we are still now independent country. After the war, Finland started to be active in, in the field of peace building in the world. Actually, we were kind of a, a superpower in, in peacekeeping operations. Finland had uh, Finland have had more than 50,000 50, men and women serving in the peacekeeping operations. Here is one person among us who has been also doing that. Uh, more than, uh, in more than uh, 30, 30 operations around the world. One uh, special occasion in relation to uh, European security architecture took place in uh, 1975 in Helsinki. There was a so-called Helsinki process that led to a con conference on security and cooperation in Europe. And it was quite remarkable. First time after World War II, the 35 heads of state from Europe and North America came to the same table and could agree on a concrete text, so-called Helsinki Final Act. And that was quite important later when, when the Europe was uh, turning to a new phase and, and uh, towards the end of Cold War. Uh, one uh, related to peace, one, one definitely one uh, personality in Finland is President Ahtisaari, who received the uh, Nobel Peace Prize in 2008, and he is still active. This is maybe a totally different element, but also related to peace. We Finns, we think that uh, there is one secret weapon in order to achieve peace. We can negotiate in a peaceful uh, relaxed atmosphere. Finnish sauna is, is, is sometimes useful for also in this respect. And uh, at the same time, sauna is fin in Finland is something very, very important. It is a crucial part of uh, everyday life of Finland. And it is somehow, it is linking, linking uh, Finns to nature, and uh, there has been also scientific evidence that uh, sauna is, is uh, very good for your health, mainly because it's relaxing. And of course, the best thing would be if you we will be able to go from sauna to a clean Finnish lake to refresh yourself, either in summer or in winter time. Finnish sauna, by the way, it's totally family business. There are some other countries, there are saunas that are uh, mixed and so on, but in Finland it's poor, poor family, family business. But after, war, after the war, Finland was still a very uh, agrarian country. So the development after the war until now has been extremely rapid, like in, in Korea. Uh, we started our industrialization and, and also a very strong shipbuilding sector. By the way, at the moment, 60% uh, of the icebreakers in the world are made in Finland. Then later in the 90s, we faced this um, ICT boom and uh, it was very strong in Finland so strong that uh, it was not a wonder that, uh, that one of the, uh, actually the most biggest 
manufacturer of mobile phones at that time came from Finland. And actually in Korea as well, uh, Nokia was once the biggest uh, exporter of mobile phones. Big, at the same time, biggest foreign exporting company. So in, in that sense, we have also cooperated with each other. But behind all this development, there, is, there are three things in Finland. Education, education, and education. Starting from the kindergarten, from the very beginning, until the university. And the central thing in Finland is that uh, the education is free from the beginning until the university. So every Finn can enjoy the high quality uh, education, regardless of his or her family or, or the region he or she is coming from. And the university, uh, universities are also uh, reflecting also that, that fact. And nowadays I'm happy that there's a strong exchange program between Finland and, and Korea. So many, many Korean students are going to study in Finland and also vice versa. Here are also some of those students and I'm very happy. Happy to see you here. I was asked to present two prominent Finnish figures. And first I was tempted to select Tuve Jansson because she is, we are celebrating her 100 years anniversary this year. And she is a writer and artist whose uh, books have been translated to more languages than of anybody else in Finland. The most famous, famous figure uh, of her is certainly Moomins. I, and uh, I like Moomins as well. This is, uh, these are so cute, but at the same time they are clever, philosophical and you can uh, also, the adult, adults can enjoy the moving stories. But I didn't select her. <laughs> I didn't. I selected first the most famous Finnish composer, Jan Sibelius. Jan Sibelius is, is definitely the most famous Finnish composer and he was also behind the Finnish identity. He was part of this uh, national movement of Finland. And that is why I would be happy to play you a short video clip from Finlandia.
the importance of Sibelius was reflected that uh, in our banknotes, 100 mark, mark, mark banknotes, we had his portrait. Shall we continue? Yes, this, this was about Sibelius and, and Finlandia that is always so emotional for any, any Finn. Uh, at the same time, Sibelius, uh, as I told you, was part of this nationalist movement in Finland together with other artists. There were also painters and, and uh, poets and so on. And, uh, but at the same time, those artists, that they were, when they were national, and uh, they felt uh, very strongly uh, Finnish, nationalistic, they were also very international. They were traveling abroad, studying abroad, like Sibelius, he, he studied first in Helsinki, but later in Berlin, Vienna, uh, Italy. So he was also very international. But when, uh, when uh, uh, visiting Germany, he realized that uh, the national epos of Finland would give really great source of inspiration and therefore, for example, this, this image is painting is from Kalevala, our national epos. Other artists that were among this, uh, this movement uh, spent o quite often time together in Helsinki, often late in the evenings. Sibelius is here on the right hand. And as you can understand, the dynamic life, city life in Helsinki was finally uh, a bit too much. And uh, that is why Sibelius moved to countryside and enjoyed the peaceful Finnish nature there. Certainly Finland and Finnish music is much more than, than Sibelius and, and there are every summer, for example, there are plenty of festivals either in classic music, beautiful uh, events, venues, uh, chamber music, there are opera festivals that are held annually in, in this castle and uh, also jazz festival and, and other music festivals. I will just mention that uh, there are also one, one uh, ge uh, genre that is popular in Finland that, that is heavy metal, but I will speak about it later. Another person that I have selected is the most famous Finnish architect. He is Alvar Aalto. And uh, since I'm not any expert in architecture, I would like to ask Professor Lee from Hongik University if you could say a few words about him. You might even come here and, and uh, if you would like to use Korean, please feel free. Yes, please. Yeah, actually, I have prepared the uh, English introduction, but um, they said <laughs> I better speak Korean because I didn't prepare for Korean. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but please feel free. Okay, it's a great pleasure to introduce Alvarto to Korean people. Um, let me speak Korean. Yes, please. Alvarto는 그 핀란드를 대표하는 건축가예요. 그래서 알바르토는 1898년에 태어나서 이 1976년에 이제 사셨는데 그 핀란드를 대표하는 건축가지만 어 20세기 모더니즘이라고 하죠. 20세기 모더니즘 건축을 대표하는 그 5대 대가 중에 한 명으로도 치고 어 
그래서 이제 그, 그 건축뿐만 아니라 알바알토는 이제 지금까지 이 대사님 의자도 이게 알바알토 의자예요. 그 알바 알바 쳐라든지 아니면은 이제 플라워 베이스라든지 아니면 라이링이라든지 이런 많은 피스들이 아직까지 많은 사람들의 사랑을 받고 있는 핀란드를 대표하는 건축가예요. 그리고 또 알바알토는 아까 시벨루스처럼 그 핀란드 집회에도 등장을 해요. 집회도 등장을 하고 유로화 이전에는 핀란드 집회도 등장을 하고 어, 알바알토의 사진과 알바알토의 이제 건물들이 집회도 등장하는 만큼 핀란드가 자랑하는 건축가입니다. 그리고 어, 아까 말씀드렸지만 알바알토는 모더니즘 건축가이긴 한데 모더니즘 건축가라는 것은 어, 아주 기능에 충실하고 순수한 형태를 쓰고 아주 심플한 건축을 하는 거예요. 그래서 1930년대 바우하우스라든지 이런 그런 근대주의가 시작될 때 알바알토도 마찬가지로 어, 아주 심플한 형태를 쓰고 그런 충실한 모더니스트 건축가이고 국제주의 양식의 건축가지만 그 알바알토가 지금까지 어, 큰 전설이 된 이유는 그 모더니즘 뿐만 아니라 아주 시적이었어요. 아주 포에틱한 건축가였다는 건데 그 알바알토는 포에틱한 거를 한두 가지 정도로 볼수 있어요. 뭐냐면 알바알토 의자에서도 볼수 있지만 그 곡선이 우리가 근대주의 모더니즘 하면 아주 이렇게 90도 직각 박스 이런 걸 생각할 수 있는데 알바알토의 건축은 아주 자유로워요. 그래서 선들이 유리하게 흘러가고 그 다음에 어 여기 전정을 보면 은 여기는 좀 다르긴 하지만 알바알토의 건물들은 전정이 이렇게 곡선으로 이렇게 이어지면서 하늘의 빛을 충분히 선라이트를 받아들이게 만들었어요. 그래서 그 알바알토의 건축은 어, 뒤에 이미지가 좀 있는지 모르겠는데 그, 그 유리한 곡선 때문에 항상 이렇게 지붕 라인이라든지 전정 라인이 아주 자연스러운 곡선 그런 것들을 가지고 있고 그런 것들 가구라든지 알바알토의 꽃병 이런 데도 다 이렇게 리플렉트가 되고 있어요. 그래서 그 알바알토는 심플하고 어, 아주 효율적인 모더니스트 근대주의자이기도 하지만 동시에 아주 자유로운 근대주의자였다. 시적인 근대주의자였다라고 이야기를 할수 있습니다. 그래서 간혹 가다가 알바알토의 이 공간들을 보면 그 전쟁을 보면 오로라를 보는 것 같아요. 그래서 이제 많은 그 사람들이 우리가 랜드스케이프라 그래서 땅에도 이렇게 지형이 아름다움이 있다 그러지만 그 알바알토의 건축을 이야기하는 분들은 스카이스케이프라 그래서 하늘에도 지형이 있구나 하는 것들을 보여주고 있어요. 그만큼 아주 시적인 건축가였고 그래서 이제 이성의 어떤 모더니즘과 어떤 핀란드의 그런 아주 아름다운 자연 어떤 감성들을 결합을 시키지 않았나 하는 생각을 합니다. 그리고 또이 공간을 제가 오늘 와서 보고 느끼는 것들은 그 이런 알바알토의 공간은 전쟁에도 나무를 쓰고 다른 근대주의 건축가들은 다 흰색을 썼었어요. 근데 알바알토는 벽이라든지 천정이라든지 이런 나무로 둔 재료들을 많이 썼었어요. 그래서 아주 자연 친화적인 재료들을 많이 썼었고, 그래서 이제 간단하게 정리를 하면, 그 우리가 최근에 지어진 서울시청사라든지 동대문 디자인 플라자 같은 건축가들 보면 곡선이 아주 이렇게 프리폼이라고 합니다. 그런 것들이 어떤 시작이 알바알토에서부터 시작을 했고, 그리고 지금 우리가 이제 환경 친화적인 건축, 자연 친화적인 건축 이야기하고 에코 건축 이런 이야기 하는 것도 다 알바알토 시대에 시작이 된게 아닌가 하는 이야기를 합니다. 그리고 그만큼 알바알토는 그 현대 건축가의 큰 스승으로 되고 있고요. 그리고 여러분들도 이 알바알토의 가구들은 그 곡선이 자유롭기 때문에 아주 기능적이고 인간에게 맞아요. 그래서 편안하고 그래서 자연에 가깝고 사람에 가깝고 그런 디자인을 한 위대한 건축가에 속한다고 할수 있습니다. 감사합니다. 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 In Helsinki, and it is precisely here where next year we will celebrate the 40th anniversary of uh, Helsinki uh, Conference, the uh, Conference on Security and uh, Cooperation in Europe. So, time flies. 40 years from 75. Now we are living 
different in a different world, but still this organization that was established late uh, organization of on, on security and cooperation in Europe is still needed and and, uh, and important. This is uh, only one uh, one example of of his works. His works can be found. Uh, also outside Finland, in the States, Germany, France, etc. But main, mainly, most of them are still in Finland. But uh, as said, Alvaraalto is not only architect, he's also designer. And actually he, he designed also the interior of the houses, buildings that he designed. And uh, as Professor Lee explained, there are some examples of of his his design, these two chairs are more than uh, designed more than 80 years ago, and maybe today those might be one of the most copied furniture in the world. The uh, special technique he designed was uh, how to bend this wood. Here you can see the. Curb. And this is still modern, functional, and popular. Actually, the functionality is one of the main main thing in in Alvar Aalto's all all design. But at the same time, they are beautiful, like like these chairs and also this lighting. And uh, the most famous. Uh, Design object of Alvaraldo might be this uh, this uh, vase, uh, Savoy vase, also from uh, 30s. Actually, it was introduced in the Paris World Expo in 1937, and since then it has been produced many pieces. But Fin Finnish design and architecture is not only Alvar Aalto. There are also new, new names and architects. And, and but one, one element, that there, there are a few elements that are common. Uh, one is, uh, as, as mentioned by Professor Lee, it is kind of simplicity, minimalism, and functionalism, and also wood. Wood is one element which is present in many, many, many uh, works. Wood is natural because it's, Finland is full of wood, but also there is a know-how how to use wood in, in a proper way. And at the same time, it, uh, it is uh, uh, sustainable. And there are some links to the Finnish national identity this is uh, this by the way this was a chapel in in the uh, center of helsinki another church in helsinki is is uh, tempeli aukio church which which is built constructed inside the rock which is quite interesting and today it might be the most visited Church in, in, in Finland, mainly by, by tourists. Then we have to, I, I will go to the Korea. And I, I've been asked to select some personalities, Korean figures. Very difficult task. Very difficult. There are so many important people, in, including the Secret Secretary General of UN. Here he is together with our former president, Tarja Halonen. Then I, I chose uh, sports and culture. He is the one I, I have chosen. Queen Yuna. Yuna Kim is maybe, maybe one of the most famous uh, winter sport personalities. And uh, since we in Finland, we are very close to winter sport, Olympics, winter Olympics, we might have, by the way, 
per capita, we, have, we might have won more medals than any other nation uh, in relation to population. So that is why I selected her, and I, 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 I like her also very much. I like to watch her sport. And related to the Winter Olympics, certainly there is a link. Now we are preparing for Pyeongchang Olympics uh, 2018, and this picture from the from the last Olympics in Sochi. And you can understand our national feeling when Finland won Russia in ice hockey. Finland won US in ice hockey. And, and uh, we got uh, bronze medals there. So that is, that is uh, something that is linking uh, Finland very strongly to the Winter Olympics. And uh, uh, just yesterday I was happy to hear that uh, Korean ice hockey team will be able to have, get a special permission to join the ice hockey games in Pyeongchang Olympics. And this is for us, of course, a great thing. And I know that uh, at least part of the Korean ice hockey team has been training in Finland. Finland, so we wish them all the best. Uh, Koreans are excellent in organizing big events and you have definitely you have plenty of uh, experience Seoul Olympics already and now ongoing Asian Games in Incheon so you you don't need uh, help in that but if there is any any sport winter sport for example in, in, in uh, related to snow please let us know, because uh, Finland has certain snow how This is also from the Sochi, Sochi Olympics. Another person I mentioned that I have selected is related to culture. He's related to Korean wave. Sai. And I selected him not because I like so much his music, but because he has made Korea so popular with his, uh, his um, uh, art, in a way. He has made uh, Korea known, and uh, at the moment there are many Finnish musicians that are known all over the world, but uh, I think none of them are close to the achievement of, of Psy, in terms of um, having more than 2 billion downloads in YouTube. In Finland, we, as I mentioned, we do have also uh, quite many rock and heavy metal bands. Actually, in relation to population, the capita, there are more heavy metal bands in Finland than anywhere else. This is from one, one festival that are held also annually. Metal, heavy metal festival in Finland. But we don't, if we don't have Psy in Finland, we have something else to offer. And this unique nature, Finnish nature, will provide you some, some unique performances and uh, Northern Lights is one of those you can see them in winter and also in summer time when it's dark enough and even in winter time you can have things to do and, and one uh, celebrity in Finland is definitely Santa that you can meet every day in, in northern Finland, Lapland. So either in summer or, or winter, you are welcome to Finland. And, and I'm very happy that we have most, the fastest flight from Seoul to Europe is via Helsinki. And now my 
task is to try to convince Koreans to stay also in Finland for a while. That's uh, uh, closing my, my this presentation, but uh, maybe if we have still time to show a short video clip, because I have to show you something that you might see in Helsinki, so that you are convinced to stay there at least one or two nights, please. Thank you. Now, if you like, please feel free to make any questions. I try to ask. If okay, please. Ambas Ambassador, thank you for your interesting speech. Uh, would you like to mention any upcoming events or visits between our countries? Thank you very much. I'm I'm happy happy that. Uh, we are looking forward to a high-level visit from Finland to Korea. Our prime minister is planning, he has been invited by Koreans to visit, uh, visit uh, Korea at the end of this year. So that is, that is definitely one, one big thing and uh, uh, related uh, next year's program, as, as mentioned, we are celebrating the uh, 150th anniversary of John Zibelius and we are looking forward to having here some concerts, concerts in, in this relays. No, if no, there's no other questions, I, will, I would like to thank you all and, and thank especially Asan Institute and the EBS channel for this opportunity. Come, Samuel.